Good morning and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going over Five Forgotten Farms Part 3. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Forgotten Farms are something that people have actually used to farm up but have kind of like don't really focus on all that much and they don't get a lot of attention which actually means that the goal for them actually goes up slightly. Now that is because not a lot of people farm them anymore, uh, but they actually do still sell quite well. So what I've done is I have compiled some forgotten farms that are doing quite well at the moment, but not many people are actually selling them and there is a low supply on the auction house. Other than that guys, let's get into number one, which is the Ollie Blackmouth Farm. Now the Ollie Blackmouth Farm is located within Strangle Form Vale and what you really need to do is go to the bottom hand of Booty Bay, I usually start there and I work my way up and around as I would farming the Strangle Form fishing event. Basically what I will actually do is I will go over and I will just farm up loads of pools which are for the Ollie Blackmouth. Now other than that you can also do this statically by just sitting in the harbour of Booty Bay and just fishing up any old random fish but I primarily prefer to actually farm up all of the others so due to the fact that the nodes will obviously give me the Ollie Blackmouth that I want and it doesn't give me an RNG chance of actually getting them if I farm them statically. However if you are feeling lazy you can always do that but if you want to get the best gold per hour for this I go and farm up the pools other than that they are displayed on the screen right now and there is one thing I would mention when doing this with the Ollie Blackmail farm you may want to turn this into the oils and uh, for this using alchemy this is because the oils created from the Ollie Blackmail actually sell for a decent amount of gold and their sell rate is pretty high for oil pretty much and it's definitely well worth your time. So that being the case that is the Ollie Blackmail farm at number one. Coming in at number two we have the Tome of Polymorph Porcupine. Yeah I know the Tomes of Polymorph they kind of came in like a flood when it came to mage specific farms and then they kind of like dissipated no one really does them anymore. You obviously have like the polar bear one in Dragon Blight, you have the monkey one which can be either done in dead mines or you can farm it up in Pandaria, basically wherever there's monkeys. But the one that is actually looking quite prime for a good farm at the moment overall and this is in a general sense, is the Tome of Polymorph Porcupine. Now this one can be found up within the Jade Forest and the Porcupine Tome Tome of Polymorph is pretty easy to do. All you have to do is fly over to this area on the map right now and just kill all the porcupines with a mage. Remember this is a mage specific farm so you have to be a mage in order to farm this up. Now the only thing for that is just go ham and destroy all of the porcupines. You have a chance of getting a hold of a Tome of Polymorph Porcupine and if you are able to do it right you will get quite a few of these within an hour. Now, other than that, the only thing that that I would recommend is kind of just do it in like a loop, de loop fashion. So you're always killing porcupines instead of just going on a full blown massacre and try and have a bit of structure when you're actually farming this up as you want the respawns to have respawned by the time you've completed your loop. So then you're always constantly farming and killing all of these porcupines. That's the only thing I would recommend when doing a farm like this is making sure that you've always got mobs up. So the only thing that I've worked out to do is just follow it as a route. I run around the outskirts of where the porcupines are and just kill all of them running around in a weird-esque shape so to speak and that is how I like to do it because I've always got mobs to kill and this makes it quite easy to get a hold of my tomes of polymorph that way. Now coming in at number three we have the Basilisk Eye Farm. Now this one can actually be farmed up within Terracar Forest and really what you have to do is follow the rivers. These basilisks are dotted all over the actual map of Terracar Forest within Outland and what you really need to do is just go on a complete massacre. What you can do then is bring a Skinner along with you. 
Now, that is a little side note to this. You don't, it is not required, but it does help your gold per hour if you are just going on a full-blown massacre of all of these basilisks. What you're really going for is the eyes, the basilisk eyes, and then selling those on the auction house as they can be used in crafting reagents. These usually sell for a high pretty penny and they go for a decent amount of gold overall. One thing that I would side note this with is skinning like I alluded to just a second ago, and that is because you can get not high leather from this, which can also in turn increase the gold per hour you are investing into this. So I would highly recommend running this on a high mobility character with a skinner. So what I would personally do is use my demon hunter who has skinning and go on a massacre with those as then I can then just kill the basilisks, skin them, see if I get the eyes and I get the not hide leather. So I've got two materials from this, one fast selling not hide leather and then we have the basilisk eye which are moderately good sellers. So that's something you may want to bear in mind right there. Now coming in at number four and something that actually is not in worth it yet. This is a nether site ore. Now this one can actually be found after you've done the introduction quest to the nether wing. Now these ones are to get the nether wing mounts of course, but it is usually a daily quest. Now the nether site ore can actually be farmed up once you've done the introduction quest if you are a miner and then therefore you can actually farm up in the area in Shadow Moon Valley nether site ore. Now nether site ore actually ranges from like 10 gold to 40 gold depending on your server and you can get quite a lot of nether site ore per hour from this. Currently I'm actually farming up all of the relevant hours worth of data for this so I can add this into worth it. Uh, as it, I found this to be quite good in the realm of recording for it. Um, other than that, the gold for this on the majority of servers is quite high because not many people actually think about farming this up as this is tradable. So this is something you may want to consider if you are doing the Netherwing rep, is actually doing the farming for nether site or to make some gold as well as getting your mounts. So that is something you can do right there. Other than that, let's move into our last one at number five, which is Jormunga Scales. Now this can actually be farmed up within Storm Peaks. Now on the map right now, all you can see is the area where you would be wanting to farm these up. Take your Skinner with you, yes, a Skinner, and what you want to be wanting to do is kill the massive worms, basically. These are the Jormunga and the Jawmonger scales can actually sell for a pretty penny on the auction house. Overall, I find this to be a really good farm in order to do, and yeah, you can actually sell this quite well. These usually sell better than the Warhide leather and the Devilosaur leather, so that's something you may want to consider right there. And you can also use this to turn this into a load of Wrath of the Lich King transmogs in order to then sell on the auction house if you are into transmog. Other than that, you can just sell the materials flat on the auction house for a pretty penny and let someone else play around with that while you reap the rewards for your skinning farm. Now, other than that, what do I think of this farm? It's actually a pretty decent farm and currently I'm actually loving farming this up as not many people are like in the storm peaks. So I have like no competition when farming this up. So it's something you may want to consider right there. Other than that guys, that is pretty much what I'll have to say for the five best forgotten farms, part number three. Have an awesome rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow.